Good morning, Bethany. According to our Bible reading plan, the psalm, reading psalm, we read in the vision of God of peace at this time when the rumor of all of the war and all this surrounding us today, God speaks to us today in his psalm, comfort, comfort my people, comfort. We welcome all to our, this place of worship, welcome you in person worship here, and we welcome our uh, worshipers who will join us later in YouTube later. We welcome all, especially you are welcome our uh, guests today and the visitors. Would you, if you don't mind, raise your hand if you come here as a guest today. Let us welcome them. Let's give a welcome. Welcome to our uh, Bethany Church. Mm -hmm. I'd like to recognize the two people in the back, if you wouldn't mind. Please go ahead. It's uh, Jack's brother, Bob Wallace, Robert Wallace, and his daughter, Debbie. Thank you. Yeah. He is a past, past, retired pastor from Greensboro. Uh, and she is a fundraiser for one of the churches in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. They're quite famous in, around the world in the churches <laughs> in Southern Virginia, North Carolina, I should say. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to Virginia. All right. Now, um, please uh, keep your prayer, our uh, confirmants. We have uh, seven uh, children and youth who are joining the confirmation class this year. We meet every Sunday. Please keep them in your prayer. And then also, um, as we watch the, our president union address about uh, lifting up the Wearing the mask, re, uh, lift up the mask requirement in public place, and also our CDC new regulations on. But at the same time, we see the uh, rising, still staying the high number of uh, confirmed cases in our community. So we are still wearing the mask. So our Bethany's PRG team will meet soon to uh, reevaluate our wearing the mask policy and our safety pa uh, policy in Bethany Church. Until then, um, we continue to wear our mask when you come to worship. The most important is about your own uh, uh, decisions to keep you safe from any chances or opportunity of being uh, confirmed in these cases. Very, uh, at the same time, very... Uh, uh, Challenging cases and also time and also very hopeful cases as we see the more endemic news will be come on to us. Uh, for example, when I go to a grocery store, I saw the more people unmasked in grocery store, in public places anyway. But important is, act upon your own need for your own safety. All right. Welcome again. So shall we welcome each other? Let us look around. And to see who are sitting uh, with you today, let us welcome. God loves you, and we love you. Welcome. Welcome. In returning and rest, you shall, sit, you shall be saved. In, in quietness, quietness and trust, and trust shall, shall be, be your, your strength. strength. Our hymn this morning is the God of Abraham praise. If you're using your hymnal, it's 116.
remain standing for our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, ecumenical version, number 882, if you're using our hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, died, and and was buried. buried. He descended descended into the dead. dead. On the the third third day, day, he rose rose again. again. He He ascended into into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Please join me in our opening prayer. O God, God, our deliverer, deliverer. you you led your people of of old through the wilderness wilderness and brought them to the the promised land. land. Guide now now the people of your church, that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
have the children come forward and then we watch them. <laughs> That's fine. We use my big voice then. Good morning. Good morning. I have a little message for you. How many of you remember that last weekend we went to the Bible Museum? It's called the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. You remember hearing about that? We're going to be talking more about it, and some of you actually went with us, so thank you. Uh, we'll be talking more about it on the fourth Sunday of this month when we have our Youth Participation Sunday. But this Sunday, I wanted to share a few things with you. I'm getting really personal and letting you know what's in my purse. <laughs> now, for most of you men out there, you know you don't touch your wife's purse, nor do you put your hand in your wife's purse. <laughs> but I'm going to show you what's in mine. All right? Let's see. Okay, so, well, you know, we all have our cell phones. And my wallet. Let's see. Every once in a while, we need a hard candy, right? So I've got one of those. And my gum. And of course, a mask. Because we do. And then, you know, every once in a while, I've got this or that. But last Saturday, I added something really special to my purse. And that's what I'm going to show you. I added a cross. How many of you have seen a small cross like this one? And do you know what type of wood it's made out of? Olive. Olive wood, yes. It's a very special one, and I picked this up at the museum's gift shop, because you can't leave the museum without stopping at the gift shop. And we had a great time discovering what was important to all the different children that came and youth that came with us on that Saturday. And some are looking at the books, some postcards. Um, two of the youth actually um, purchased crosses for themselves. It was just a special time for them. But I picked this one up because I thought, I've seen many people. One of my friends, Miss Jane, has one that she's shared with me before. And I've seen her carry it. I thought, it's so cool because if you look at it, it fits perfectly in your hand. And I do believe that that's exactly the way it was meant to fit. It was in your hand, and you can say a prayer. The other night, we had our Shrove Tuesday night pancake breakfast. First time that we did that, and it was awesome. And the next day, we had Ash Wednesday service. That also was at 7 o'clock in the evening. And I brought my son, Austin. We sat at that light at Tide Mill for what seemed to be nine minutes. <laughs> and we were running late. I said, Austin, hand me my purse. And he's thinking, she needs lipstick now? <laughs> and he got out my purse for me. And I took out this cross and seriously said a prayer. Just make sure we make it to church on time and safe. And we did. With about 30 seconds to spare. <laughs> but we made it. And I thought, this is a cool thing for me to have as part of my life now. And I welcome you to find something like this. Either a cross for your pocket or a cross for a book that you have at school. A cross for you to put in your purse or your book bag. Something that reminds you that God is with you. He gave us his only son who died on a cross for us. Either for times when we're sitting in traffic when we need that extra prayer, when we're running late, or when things are just great and we want to tell him how blessed we are. But it's just a daily reminder for all of us as Christians to remember what happened on that cross. If we could have a short prayer together, if you'd bow your heads. Dear God, thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. And thank you for the importance of this season as we learn more about the cross. Amen. Thank you. Let us join together in the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of the Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, 
we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The word that Isaiah, son of Amaz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And our gospel reading this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 14 through 23. Please stand as you are able. These are the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When the hour had come, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant that my, in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to the one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be unto God. God. Let us be seated and go to God in our prayer. Lord, as you have given your prophet Isaiah, so now we pray, O oh Lord, give us your vision, vision of peace among the nations. As you remember the war, Eastern Europe, Russians' invasion, into Ukraine, and then people killed, suffered, left their home, remain as refugees. Lord, speak to us. Speak to us, O Lord. In your name, Jesus the Lord, we prayed. Amen. About 30 years ago, when I took a trip to New York, I visited the United Nations buildings and exterior ground to see a sculpture made by Russian artist. 
The title of the sculpture is Let Us Beat Sword into Plowshares. And an artist built it, inspired by the passage in Isaiah we read, visioning for peace of the world. Now, since a week ago, the world the community has seen the war in Eastern Europe, the invasion of Russia into Ukraine with heavily, heavy arms and heavy military campaign. We have the news every day. And we have watched the news from mass media or individual social media. News of killing thousands of people. Uniformed and civilian, even 18 months old baby. Children. We have watched the ruined streets, demolished buildings. And terrified people have to leave their place, remain as a refuge. And we have learned through human history that for whatever reason, whatever the reason, either in deeply rooted ideological, political, or national, nationalist belief, war by military arms and military campaign always include, always included collateral damage, such as killing the people, destroying their lives. We watched that the General Assembly of the United Nations made a resolution to condemn the Russian invasion and asking them to stop the war. And the global community also raised the united voices and make a sanction against Putin and Russia. And their invasion without, without justifications. The rally against the Russian invasion has become global and then humanitarian aids were called for worldwide to help the refugees. All faith communities, including us, beginning last Sunday, are united in prayer for people in suffering from this war and for peace and stop the war. We always prayed daily, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on those who suffer from it. Lord, have mercy who brought this war. People, leaders who started this war. Have mercy on this sinfulness of the humanity. People. Now, as we pray daily, as we read in scripture, meditate on everyday base, our call is, what would God call us to respond? What can we do? God calls for the living with prophetic vision of hope and peace. There will be a day, Isaiah proclaimed when God will judge between the nations and God will settle disputes for many peoples. It is a vision for the kingdom of God, God's rules in which people will be ruled by the rule of God 
by God's love, by God's mercy, God, by God's justice, and by God's righteousness. It is a vision for new life, living in peace, needing no more arms that cause killings, destructions, but changing them into tool, tools for the sake of human life, tools to bring forth life, tools for giving life, tools for life saving, life enhancing tools. So they will train for war no more. And God enabled Prophet Isaiah to see this vision of peace when his nations and his country had always been at the threat of war among the great superpowers, so-called superpowers at that time, surrounding them, such as Egypt from the south, Assyria from north, Babylonia from the west, so that he and his nation could always stand firm in trust, in faith of God. Stay on this vision. What does God call us for today? Now, 21st century, and then especially all the people who believe in God in this country, living in peace. State of Virginia, close to point. Bethany United Methodist Christians. What does God call us to respond to this vision today? And how to respond to God's call, God's call for peace. As we meditate, um, meditate on the passage today, Isaiah chapter 2, I want to share with you three some inspirations. First one is, we are called to announce, announce for the future reign of God, the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God is coming. In the, all, I mean the, most of the chapters in the book of uh, Isaiah, we read a frequent uh, phrase such as, in that day, or in the last days. It repeatedly written, this phrase. Those are the phrases that Isaiah writes to affirm that God rules the world in the end. And the people can live at last with radical change in existing conditions. From war to peace. From misled or self-egoistic desire for nationalism or political gains or any conflict, or any sinful ideology, to unity, peace. Secondly, we are called to proclaim it, proclaim that the future belongs to God. Even though we are surrounded by many threats, Rumors of war, fear, anxiety. Future belongs to God and we are to respond to this call by seeking God's teaching and following it as it says. By transforming weapons into agricultural tools by turning away from war. Turning from killing or destroying lives to bring up life, saving life. It's our call. 
That is what one does with the goodness of God's reign in every age, including today. Calling for repentance. Change our mindset. Change our perspective. Change our thoughts. Change our value systems. Respond to God's call and participate in action. Consequently, those who would respond to this vision will seek to become peacemaking, peacemaker, not accusing individuals or nations, but acting as mediators, following God's teaching. Thirdly, we are called to embody, embody peacemaking in our daily lives, wherever we are, individually and communally, at home, at work, at the church, in our community. Embody in word, in thoughts, in action, peacemaking. The vision of peace invites all who hear it, to live by it, live it out as a sign of the kingdom of God in us. And in any movement and any activity in the direction of peace with love, God's love, God's justice, God's mercy, and God's righteousness, the right way, but for God. Since Russia invaded Ukraine, global community, even within Russia, have stood against the Russian invasion, shouting out, Putin, stop the war, even within Russia. All age group, even little gold, Shout it out. And she was arrested by the Russian police. Is this the kind of country that God wants to see? I don't think so. And all humanitarian aids, fundraising campaigns are called for to help those who are suffering from this war, refugees and wounded. So as a community, we also want to join in this humanitarian aid. So our annual conference will print it out. How do we help? And see how all the different uh, resources you can find and join with them to help those who lost their homes, who are living in fear and anxiety, the victims of this war, and those living in Refuge conditions. Probably, it seems unrealistic to expect just a peace among all nations in an immediate future. But this vision, like so much teaching in the Bible, confronts our fears and our self self resignation. with the assurance that God will one day reign again, rule us, rule the world in peace, in peace. And this passage brings home to all who hear it in the power of expectations, visions, and it kindles hope. So we read this vision aloud and again and again and again and again every day in our prayer. Well, peace may not come even as we expect it, as we visualize it, even we hope it and pray for it. Wishing for peace will not necessarily make it happen right now, but, but 
It certainly will not come unless we imagine it, unless we visualize it, unless we believe it, unless we pray for it, unless we articulate the vision that God wills the end of the world. That's what we are called to be united together to pray for this peace. And the living God, living God can make it happen. That is our trust and faith and assurance. Today, the Lord Jesus invites us to his table. Self-giving table. Giving bread, his body. Giving cup, his blood. And then Jesus Christ calls us to be the bread of life for the world. To embody him, his love in our daily lives for peace, making to a troubled world. People who are in suffering. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift up our hearts and mind. Lord, we lift up and pray for your peace on earth, your kingdoms, your rules, your reign. Let your kingdom come, kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for Eastern Europe, Ukraine, suffered by the war, invasions, and the people lost their lives, lost their homes. Uniformed and ununiformed civilians together. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for the leaders of the nations, our leader, our president, leaders in Europe, Asia, leaders in Russia. Lord, hear our prayers. Especially we pray for those family whose loved one were killed, even baby, their mothers, crying out. It's like a mothers who lost their child by Herod's and then King Pharaoh's killing the babies out of their fear, out of their political gains. Lord, hear the mother of crying who lost their babies. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, have mercy on us. Teach us how to respond to your call for peace, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And now we lift up for those who are the sick, who are the weak, suffer from cancers, suffer from pains, suffer from torn relationships, suffer from daily lives, heavy burden of daily lives, suffer from Parkinson's. Lord, we lift up their names. In your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Thank you, Williams. Lord, hear our prayers. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Danny Wilson. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, 
hear our prayers. Billy Goodman. Lord, hear our prayers. Shirley Wood. Lord, hear our prayers. Dorothy Warren. Lord, hear our prayers. Jack Forrest. Lord, hear our prayers. Bastille. Lord, hear our prayers. Marjorie Tr Trueberry. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Kathy Goyne. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lois Cecil. Lord, hear our prayers. Mike Anderson. Lord, hear our prayers. Krista Chase and the people of Ukraine and Russia. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we give our thanks for this time of prayer. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ our Lord invites all to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another as we join the prayer of confession and pardon on your page 8 in your hymnal or in the screen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obeyed in the church. We have not done your will. We have broke your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves to God as living sacrifices, and let us offer God's gifts, God's ties to God together. And we invite ushers to come forward. Let us pray. Lord, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifices. Offer this visible sign of our thanksgiving. Receive us and receive them. Bless us and bless them and use, us, use them for your kingdom come, for your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus' name, Amen.
Let us be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You brought us all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and pressed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made a covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Eliza fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and on your holy mountain and I heard your still, small voice. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise you, your name, and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, when you gave him to save us from our sin. Your Spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry when he suffered and died on the cross for our sins. You raised him to life presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave a verse to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now when you've, your people prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts. That during these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted and then graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Jesus Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. 
Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ for the world. That we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray together the Lord's Prayer as he taught us to do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. The kingdom come will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive the trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord as he invited us. And then our bread and cup is located in each pew during this pandemic time. So please, please take the cup from your pew. Take out the first seal to find the bread. Body of Christ given to you, given for you, and take and eat. And then take, take the second seal. Blood of Christ, pour out for you, for the new covenant. Drink it in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Let us join together the prayer of thanksgiving after communion. You'll find it on page 11 in your hymnal or on the screen. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you are able, shall we stand? Join our closing hymn together.
God has led us during this time of worship. God will continue to lead us to go into the world, to live anew in faith and hope. As we love God together, as we love each other, as we serve the Lord and as serve the world, in the name of Jesus Christ, go now in peace and love and joy. As you go, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever and evermore. Amen.